It is the Speakeasy Podcast where we talk about the behind the scenes of what it means to be the successful, successfully paid speaker, entrepreneur, and author. With that being said, guys, you know, a lot of times people don't want to talk about the, the bad things. They don't want to talk about the things that, you know, may have hurt us a little bit, made us a little nervous. But guess what? That's what we come and talk to you all the time about. Why? Because we want to make sure that you are successfully Hey, with that being said, I am your host, Alta Pelzer, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, Amazon bestselling author, and founder of the World Voice League. Guys, ah, guess what? Woo! It's time for us to dig, dig right in. But before we dig right into today's topic, Daniel, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Daniel Gomez, and I reside here in San Antonio, Texas. I've been married with my wife for over 20 years. And now we're kind of empty nesters now. My son just moved out this past school year. He's a freshman at Texas State. So it's just me and my wife and our two dogs. So if you hear a couple of dogs barking, they, they kind of, they're our children now. So they're, they're used to me feeding them and everything else. So it's, it's, it's just amazing. I've been a, I'm a motivational keynote speaker. I, I focus on pretty much um, four arenas. It's uh, leadership and team building. I do sales mastery, which is what we did on your summit. And then I do um, resilient speaking just to really let people know that, hey, there's another level inside of you. And then I do um, confidence coaching. I'm a confidence architect, so I help to shape your life, whether it's business or professional, because being an architect, you can build your life if you want. So that's, that's, those are the four things that I do. Oh, my goodness. So I'm super excited. You know, when we talk about resiliency and we think about the entrepreneur story, um, a lot of times the ones that you see at the highest level of success, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that they made it through X, Y, and Z. But that's simply because sometimes we get a little nervous when it comes to X, Y, and Z. <laughs> <laughs> so in starting out, let's talk about what that resiliency really looks like. What, it, what is needed for us to have that resiliency in this journey? Well, it's, it's funny we're talking about this, but not funny, but ironic because just a couple of weeks ago, I, I was talking to a, another speaker and he's kind of, he's kind of up there also. And we were just talking and he goes, well, what's your take on it, Daniel? And I said, well, this is my quote. You're not a true entrepreneur until you've wept in the restroom. And he's like, well, what do you mean by that? I go, dude, <laughs> you're not an entrepreneur. You're not, whether you're a speaker, coach, whatever you may be doing until you've cried in the restroom. And you really thought about giving up. And the reason I say that with that quote, because I, I lived that. And I'll never forget, I was, I was visiting organizations. I stopped by and I was in a good mood. And, and hey, this isn't that I didn't have clients at the time. It's just that, you know, you, you're always reaching for that other level. But sometimes after you hear so many no's, it just, it, it breaks you down. And I remember going into the restroom and I just was standing there. And tears just came down my eyes, and I was 99.9% sure I was done. I said, why am I struggling? I can go get a job for six figures easily. Because that's what I would do before. I would run, I would run dealerships. And, you know, to run a dealership, you, you easily over 100000 And I was crying. I mean, tears were coming down my eyes. So I, I sucked it up. I made up in my mind I'm going to go home and just, you know, somebody will hire me. That's what That was my mindset put water on my face and I walked out. As soon as I walked out, you hear one of my old salesmen, I didn't even know he was there. He's like, Daniel. And I'm like, I couldn't see him because there was some cars on the showroom floor. Hey, Daniel. And I'm like, so I finally look because he's short. He goes, hey, man, keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, I'm watching your stuff on, on Facebook. You're making a difference. And at that moment, I knew it was God talking to me. So, believe me, I was done. And I, went, and I stayed there with, for five minutes, and he just said, just keep doing what you're doing. So I got in my car, and I sucked it up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go visit one more business because I need to do this for myself. Because if I don't go to another business and I go home, that means I quit. So just after crying out of the restroom, I drove to another organization. And nothing transpired of it, but I did plant some seeds. But the whole point is that I kept going forward. and. A lot of speakers, a lot of coaches, a lot of entrepreneurs, they would have quit there. And let me tell you, I'm going to be honest, excuse my language, but it sucked the way I felt. And you're going to have those moments when you're going to come to that 
wall, if anybody's a runner out there, it's kind of like when you're running a marathon, no matter how much you train, you're going to hit that wall to where your, your mind has to take over and push you through that, that mental barrier. And believe me, I, I, I just, it's funny we're talking about this because I, I, I just kind of went through this. I just came back from a big speaking engagement from California. Everything was awesome. But there's always that other level. And that other level is where growth happens. But I just, just yesterday I was feeling frustrated. I'm being totally transparent with you. I was feeling frustrated. And it's like, you know, you, you kind of bang in your head. And it's, it's you got to bang your head to the top. <laughs> it's interesting, you know. The running joke or meme that you'll see on Facebook and Instagram is, you know, you got to check in on entrepreneurs because every other day they're going back and forth between, am I going to get this done and do it? Or am I going to have to go and be a stripper? Am I going to get this done? Am I going to need to sell blood? Like they go back and forth. And, you know, it's, it's interesting for me. I, I go back and I say, you know, what else do I have? You know, if, if I, if this does not work, what else is there? And I think about that same, you know, that same thing, you know, okay, well then I'd have to go back and get a job and I'd have to go back and, and start working again. And interestingly enough, the company that I was working for, I just found out they're closing their doors. That's a sign you shouldn't have been there. <laughs> I said, well, so if I had stayed and at the time, they were pressuring me to take a higher position. If I had stayed and taken that higher position, it would have been short-lived because here it is, less than two years later, I'd be looking for another job. Yeah. And, and, and one thing that I want to say is, is you, you have to have, you got to know that no matter how many clients you talk to, you got to see every no as getting you closer to a yes. And you got to understand that it's not just, like, for instance, I'm going to be honest. I mean, I'm being totally transparent here. My program just launched. It launched in December. I kind of didn't like the way it was online. And so we re I redid some videos. We redid the wording. And I wasn't, it wasn't a full launch. And it didn't launch it. So granted, even though it was ready, I wanted to put the extra effort to get it to where I wanted it to be. And most entrepreneurs will just, take what's average and they won't go that extra mile and after i redid the videos after i did that because you kind of I mean you pay you pay well over four or five thousand to get something built like this and people don't realize that but by the grace of god it's like as soon as i did all that i sold like five or six programs and it was just a blessing to do that but let me tell you it was it was it took six weeks before i got the first sale to redo everything because it's, it's, it's just, you think like, man, I already put on this time. I've been building it for three months. All these things go through your mind and you just, that's, this is where you have to just really let go and just let God take over. And my problem is that I want to be in control of a lot of things. And unfortunately, I really had to just surrender to it. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of tears. There's a lot of frustration there's a lot of people say man Daniel, you did a great job at tag talks in sacramento but they don't see what we went through to get there because you got to bounce back not once not twice not three times we're gonna bounce back 25 times <laughs> yes indeed you know people don't see they they look at you and they're like oh my goodness you're traveling you're doing events and you're doing this they don't see the behind the scenes they don't see the, 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 the issues with PayPal and the issues with this payment system or, uh, you know, all of the different things that nobody really talks about. Because, right? Because if I'm telling you that I made a million dollars, I want you to, you know, sign up for my program because I made a million dollars and you're ready to make a million too. I didn't tell you that I in, at times invested <laughs> almost half or three, you know, three quarters of it in order to get to the million and that part. That yes. is, that's and, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. No, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because I love, I love helping people. And, and one person that I really admire is Sean Douglas because Sean Douglas really puts out a lot of good content out there to help people out. And I, I, I love that he does that. And I love doing that too. I'm not as vocal as, as Sean is. I need to do a better job probably of it, but, the reason I say that is because if somebody reaches out to me, I'll give them some 
information and tidbit. And I don't mind helping people out, but there comes a point where, okay, you got to invest in yourself. And I'll ask them, okay, great. You know, we've talked a couple of times. Have you ever had a coach before? Well, no, I haven't had one. I don't want to know. But as soon as I got in the door, right off the back, I had two coaches, right? I had one. Sean was one of my coaches that helped me out tremendously. I had another coach. And that's how you grow. That's how you accelerate your learning. But we don't want to accelerate our learning because we want to be cheap. But we want to invest in our. We don't want to invest in ourselves. And I'm being real. So don't think about the money you spend on your business, on yourself, as a cost. You're not buying anything. You're investing it in yourself. And people don't realize that. They, they want to barter with this and barter. I'm, not to be rude, but I'm not in the bartering business. I love to help people. I love to encourage people. I try to put the best content that I have out there and, and add value to people in any way I possibly can. If somebody asked me for help, like yesterday I went to a networking event, spent about uh, you know 35 minutes with this one gentleman. and he was really thankful, which is great. But there's only there. I can only talk to somebody, that same person, three or four times, and it's like, okay, guys, it's you. You have to give me something back. And it just, it's so. I want to tell all you entrepreneurs out there. It's not money that you're spending. It's money that you're investing within yourself. And if you can't have the faith and the confidence to invest in yourself, how can you expect other people to do it? How can you do it? You can't. Because if you have to have that belief in, your, in yourself, you have, have to, you have to have that conviction that I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm deciding that I'm doing this today. I'm deciding that I'm not looking back like you just said about your job. I'm, I'm going forward. And what really was really hard for me, what really just was, was a mental block for probably for, I would say about two or three months, is that knowing that I could go get a six-figure job anywhere, sometimes... I would sabotage myself by that until so I finally said, you know what, forget this. I'm going full steam ahead. And that's when things started taking off. When I said, you know, I don't, I'm burning the ships, like they say, and think you grow rich and, and I'm just going to go forward. But in going forward, that's when, that's when I guess the, 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 the reality of it was to write that first $500 check for your business was like, eh, it wasn't too bad. Well, then they say, okay, you got to put out a thousand, Daniel. Ah, right. But now, it's, it's truth. I'm, be, I'm being. I'm being real. People want to know what it's to be successful. They want. This is a. Re, this is where the resilience comes in of not being stingy and not wanting, not being cheap on yourself and investing money in who you are. So when I said, okay, that's gonna be a thousand dollars. Great. You know what? The first one's done. I'm gonna tell you. It, it, it didn't come easy, but today I spend five hundred thousand dollars like nothing, and not like nothing. But if, I've, I've, I've invested in myself. I just bought these new, I don't even have a copy of it. I, want to, I just bought these new 4 by 9s $300. Okay, let's do it. Because you know what? Why don't we get this? Other? It sounds like a good idea. Let's do it. Great. But it's that investment that you make in yourself for your marketing. For Facebook, is great. You got you to gotta take care of your city, too, and put some information out there in these networks and let them know that, hey, this is, this is Daniel. I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm a speaker. I love to do that. And there's even times when I'm there and God will tug on my heart. Like the gentleman that I spent time with, you know, he can tell he was kind of down, you know, and say, well, why, why am I going to sell him a book for $10 or $15 when I could give him one and plan a seed in his life and really serve him? And that's the next thing in resilience is when you help others attain their dreams, God will send people back to help you attain your dreams. You reap what you sow. And most people... And I was guilty of this is, is I had to rechange my thinking is don't be selfish so much at all, really. And your business will skyrocket. You'll see the, how amazing your, your, your speaking career or coaching or training career will take off when you really stop being selfish and put your, I was, actually, I, I did a quote today and I haven't put it out yet, but it's, if your ego is bigger than your bank account, what do you think the problem is? I have to agree with you on that one. Most definitely. <laughs> I think a lot of times when people people have this fear of investing because they think if I invest, I'm going to lose. If I in, Or what if I invest and I lose? And I often tell people, well, how are you investing? You know, a lot of times we think, oh, I, I need to, it always is that idea of investing my last. You don't need to invest your last. You need to 
create something so that way you can have something to invest or look at your finances. But there's that fear of investment. If I make the investment and I, uh, you know, something falls through or it doesn't work out, now what do I do? And I tell people, listen, I, last year alone, I told my clients, there was money left on the table simply because everybody didn't finish paying off their, you know, their programs and everybody didn't, some people started and stopped and then they unfriend you and you never hear from them again. Like you never know. It's, it's like that saying, right? If you want to get rid of a family member, lend them some money, you'll never see them again. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and you're just like, uh, it's a part of business. It is. And but you will find that there will be some ways that you can get past that point. But it definitely is a part of business. Is that yeah? You're, there's going to be some times where the investment wasn't the best investment. That's fine. And I've done that. I remember I went to an event, and you get there, and it just sometimes you feel like, man, should I have spent that? And that's how you grow. And you. So for all you entrepreneurs and seekers out there, coaches, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to invest in things that you thought were a great idea and some are going to work something. I've done it myself, but I want to tell you this. And, and, and I want to say, cause I remember I went to an event and it, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't really exactly what I expected, but I spent $997, but I did take away one thing that has helped me in my career. And it was the fact of saying that I, I'm, I'm deciding to have more than enough time for everything I need to accomplish. Then my mindset on time. Because the more we say we don't have time, guess what we don't have? Time. So I am deciding to have more than enough time to accomplish everything I need to accomplish. And that little part of the training that I, said, that I did, it, 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 it was worth the $997. But people don't value themselves the way they should. So they complain about that. And they're like, to me, if you get one idea that's going to shift you and get you to where you need to be, then it's one idea. And it's, it's worked. Whatever it is, put it this way. If you really want to grow your business, you're going to invest 100, 200, 1,000, 5,000. It takes that. So you got to see this, the, the, the value within yourself to say, you know what? I'm worth it. And then you grow from there. It's that inner dialogue, you know. Yeah, I, okay. I, again, it still was the investment. Even the moments where you lose out, it's still an investment. There's something that you learn and grow from that moment. Um, I tell people, my first time doing a, a book collaboration was the worst experience ever. I, <laughs> it took a, almost like a year and a month, like 13 months for the book to come out. All, it, was all, it was a headache. And I was like, <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did I make this investment? Why did I do this? But then just recently, I did a book collaboration. It ran really smoothly. It was amazing. And it's an awesome experience because um, Dr. George Frazier is doing the foreword. Les Brown is doing the afterword. I'm like, look at the opportunity. So if I would have allowed that first opportunity to shut me down from ever saying yes to another book collaboration, I wouldn't be here in this, having this experience and this opportunity right now. So you just have to learn to learn, you know, learn from different experiences and take what you can and move forward with them. Yeah. And, and the, the resilience part is this is, and cause I, I mean, I, I still go through this, right. I, I apply it four or five engagements or six or seven. Like right now, as a matter of fact, I'm waiting for this lady to call me back. It was a late opportunity that it came in and, um, if I get it, I really want it. It's going to be a good opportunity to drive up to Austin here about 5 o'clock tonight. But I'm saying that because you're going to go through a lot of no's. Yeah. You're going to go through a lot of no's. You're going to go through some free paid speaking engagements. You need to practice your coaching on people that, that you know, give them a free session to get you going. If you're, if you're, if you're brand new into this, it, you have to be resilient in that. And your mind's going to tell you, man, I'm wasting my time man, I should be doing this, or man, I don't want to speak for free. Well, now now I'm at the point where when I first started, it's like, I, I, don't, I want to get paid, but I, I wasn't as good as I am now. And people have to be honest with themselves to say, would you pay for this? And now I can honestly say, hey, <laughs> you got to pay for this. 
but I will go do there. I, I will do a speech. I'll say, hey, well, you know, I buy so many books, but now I have my program to sell too. And, you know, you make money on the back end of it also. But that's where it's getting better at your, at your, at your speaking engagements, getting better at offering your products from the, from the stage. It's, 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 it's another level. And a lot of speakers don't get to that level. And I'm not, I mean, I'm, by no means have I arrived in the presenting from stage because still, I'm still learning in that arena with the verbiage and all that. But it's, you got to try it and you're going to screw up and you got to be okay with it. So if you go through one no, if you go through 20 no's, if you go through 100 no's, get back up and be resilient. Fight. You have to make it up in your mind. You have to have the conviction. Go back to the word. You, I want your audience to see this. You need to put that word conviction in your heart, in your soul right here. Because when you have that conviction that I can do this, whoever you're speaking to about your product, about your service, they're going to feel it too. They're going to have that conviction. And the conviction is going to keep you going because that's going to say, I'm all in and I'm convinced that I'm going to make a difference in your life. I'm convinced that I'm going to change the outcome of your audience. I'm convinced that after you're done with my coaching program, one-on-one -on -one live, or however you do it, you're going to be a different person. But if you're not convinced of it, if you don't have that conviction, how do you expect your clients to say yes? And you know, you just hit on another point too, because as speakers, we do go through some moments where, of course, in the beginning, everybody wants to be a paid speaker. There's different levels to it. I know we talked about that on a, a different episode, the different levels of speakers and why, you know, when you say you're a paid speaker, it means different things to different people. But we've gone to events where you may have made an investment to be there, you know, with the promise of selling from the stage, and there's only five people there. We've made the investment of time and travel to get to an event and the event get canceled or, you know, things like that. That's still going to be a part of that journey. Not every, you know, not every opportunity is going to be the perfect one where you just show up and say, buy my stuff and 20,000 people sign up for your program. And we wish, <laughs> but we got to think even Lisa Nichols does free events. Um, Les Brown does free things where he's speaking for free. There's still speakers that are at that, that even that higher level that we're trying to achieve that still understand the importance of investment. Yes. I mean, if, it's, if it's for a nonprofit or if it's for something for a good reason, I did that the other day, actually two months ago, it was December and they were like, well, I said, you know, I said, I just, I, to me, I pray about a lot of things. I, I went over there. I sold 61 books so that's it's almost a thousand dollars that's a lot of money but if i would have let my ego say well you know no i'm not going to do that i'm like no i'm not going to go for free but i knew that i was doing it for the right motive for that pe for those people and you know god bless me with almost a thousand dollars and imagine that if my pride my ego hey we're talking about ego my ego would have gotten in the way well i'm not going to go we are crazy huh? you're, you're you're missing out you're missing out not only that I just came from, from Tag Talks Life. I had never had met a billionaire in my life. Ever, 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 ever. Right? But I was able to meet Mr. Alex Stern, and he was a big blessing, and he took us to dinner. So now I can honestly say I've had dinner with a billionaire in Alex Stern. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that investment always pays off. I always look and go, wow, the connections that are being made. You know, it's, it pays to show up. Yes. Just, just, just being there makes a big difference. It's, you never know who you're going to meet. And like, he, we just bonded, you know, and I think he's, he's, a, he's a billionaire. But he took us out to dinner. He was real down to earth, real humble. And it, it worked. It, it, so he's a connection that's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's somebody that can make a difference in your life down the road. And you don't want to, but most of us miss out on those opportunities because we don't see what the potential is in everything. One person can change your life. One person, one person can change your life. And um, it's just, it's just awesome. It's just, it's just amazing stuff. So just never, never undersell yourself and never under, Think the possibilities, because if you expect the worst, you're going to get the worst. But if you expect the best, you're going to get the best. 
And I can honestly tell you, I met another individual there that I'm, I'm one, he knows Tony Robbins. I'm one connection away from Tony Robbins now. Like literally that this guy knows him and talks to him. And so it's like, you never know who's going to connect, but you got to put yourself out there. You got to invest in yourself and you got to not worry about the no's and think about the yeses that are going to come. So true. So, so true. And so I always ask every guest that comes on, what has been a blunder for you in this journey so far? We've talked about, we've heard about everything from wardrobe malfunctions to your font being too small in the book to all different types of things. So on this journey so far, what has been a blunder that you've come in contact with that you kind of look back and go, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Blunder, a blunder. Hmm, you got me on that one. You kind of got me tongue twisted. A blunder, huh? A blunder. I <laughs> I would have to say, I would have to say being excited about some of the first videos I did and I put them on my webpage on YouTube and I look back at them and I'm like, man, that stuff is junk. And you gotta be honest with yourself. And sometimes sometimes the picture is better than the video, depending if it's a high quality picture. So I I would think just really, you know, sometimes we're we're eager to to we're, we're, we're eager. We get ahead of it. Most of us don't take action, but I, I tend to get ahead of myself. And uh, so I really need to just kind of take a step back and look at what I'm doing and what I've done. So I, I would, I would say that just being more patient and uh, cause I always want to be out there. And some of those videos, I'm like, man, I had this stuff on my website. I don't, I don't believe that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have hired this guy either. <laughs> True. And we think about it. It's like, you know, when, when you're eager to do it, it's like, go, 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 go. And then you look back and you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I can definitely understand that. I, I, the running joke is, you know, when I look at my first photo shoot, I don't like pictures. Mm -hmm. but a photo shoot for me has to be something like it, you just have to take pictures and I do stuff and, and, and some of the photos come out really nice. But that first photo shoot was like a planned photo shoot. And I had like, you know, the black and white and the all white shirt. And, and I was just like, I look like the poster child for teen pregnancy. What is, what is this? <laughs> oh, you're so funny. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the humor. I think I think especially in having in having a you're being an entrepreneur, you have to have a sense of humor and you gotta laugh at yourself sometimes. You have to laugh at yourself and and you gotta know in the resilience part, there, there there's there's gonna come a point when you hit that wall like I was talking about, and you gotta reach out for help. And I think most people don't let people know they, they wanna paint a facade that they need help. I mean that they're okay and no, it's like I'm telling you. That's why I said, you know, I have nothing to say. I've, I've cried in the restroom. I, I know what it's like. You, so, you're going to be there. You're, you're not in the restroom. You're going to be in your car. You're going to be somewhere. But let me tell you, you're going to shed some tears. And I can promise you this, and I think you can attest to this. It's not just going to happen one time. Because every level you grow, there's a new level of frustration, a new level of opportunities that await you, but it's, it's on the other side of that obstacle that is you from being who you need to be and so just know that growing your business you're going to cry not once not twice maybe three or four times and you're going to be like man but just you keep tugging along keep going and tell yourself every day i can do this i can i can i am a winner i am a champion and just really picture the end game in mind Picture yourself on that ultimate stage. Like for me, I have it in my heart. God put it in my heart. I don't know how, but somehow this year, I'm going to speak to 10,000 people in Chicago. And I don't know why Chicago, but that's what I wrote down. And that there's going to be an audience there. that, I'm, And I see that. I see the lights. I see my logos up. I, I envision that. And I feel it. I mean, look, I'm feeling it right now. I feel it. I feel it's going to happen. And it's going to happen because I'm attracting that to myself. But if you don't put that... Frequency, because if you're living life here on this frequency and your dream is here, well, you're not going to get it. So you got to bring up those feelings, those emotions that you have, that, that visualization. And that's where you got to go. You got to raise yourself up. 
And a lot of times we don't get there because the associations that we have, and you got to ask yourself, what are the five associations that are closest to me and which one do I need to get rid of? Because there might be just one, right? You're one person away from Tony Robbins, but you got to let go of one person to get to where you need to be. And most people don't want to do that. You got to repeat that one more time. Just repeat it one more time because somebody somewhere needed. Yeah. Well, that like part. I said, uh, we got to bring our vibration up. And a lot of times our vibration doesn't come up because the, there's there's five people that we usually hang around with, our five associations. It's just, it's just the way it is. Just the way I said, I'm one contact away from Tony Robbins. Well, guess what? There is a person that's keeping you, one person away that's keeping you from going where you got to go. So who's that person you got to get rid of? You're one person to, you got, you're, you're one person away to the top, but you're one person keeping you down at the bottom and you got to let that person go because you're never going to get there if you don't let go of here. And it's not easy. It's not easy, but you got to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to get to where you want to get to? Because if somebody's draining you and really just sucking the life out of you or just, you know, they know what your audience knows what we're talking about. You got, you got to cut it. And sometimes you got to, it hurts, it hurts to not move back, but you got to make that decision. Not that they're bad people, but if you want to be at a bar drinking beer and you're not going to, believe me, you're not going to become a great speaker there at the bar. <laughs> Yeah, that part. You have to understand where you're hanging out is going to definitely influence uh, just how far you're able to go. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. I uh, This has been a phenomenal. Like, we can go <laughs> on and on <laughs> in this particular interview. Um, let everyone know where they can find you at on social media, how they can connect with you, um, and then we'll wrap it up for today. Yeah, well, you can go to, actually, I, I have, I want to give out, I, ha I have the, the download available for my book. It's a free copy, danielgomezinspires.com. Just, that's a, that, that's an extra bonus for, for this audience, danielgomezinspires.com. And just put in your information, you get a free download of my book, You Were Born to Fly. And what I'm going to do here also, what I did for, for, for your summit that we had a couple of purposes is that my 30 Days to Fly transformational program, I'm going to give it to you at 197 but for buying that today, I'm going to upgrade you to the 12-week program at no additional cost, and that includes the workbook and everything. And that, you can go to danielgomezspeaker.com. It's on the homepage. Just click on 30 Days to Fly transformational, and once you make that small investment in yourself, right, it's an investment, I promise you, you're going to get the mindset that we're talking about more in depth, lifetime access. Not to the 30 days, but I'm going to upgrade you for free to the 12 weeks to fly personal growth program. It includes the workbook, includes everything. Trust me, um, I posted a, a couple of reviews I already got. People love it because most programs are too long with videos. And they were like, Daniel, this is amazing. It's short content. You know, every video is about 10 minutes. And, but it's, it's, it's impactful. It's like the stuff we're talking about. We've been on the phone. We've been on this call for about 30 minutes, but it's been impactful. So just imagine 12 videos of dynamite coming directly to you with the workbook for what should be costing you $797. You're only getting it for $197. That's my gift to you. Go to danielgomezspeaker.com and just follow me on um, all platforms. If you Google me, Daniel Gomez Inspires, you'll find me on LinkedIn and you'll find me on uh, Twitter and Facebook. Awesome, guys. I love it. You know, I love coming and being able to bring you guys so many different amazing presenters, speakers, entrepreneurs, coaches. Listen, people who are right at the point that you're trying to make it to, they've been through what you've been through. They understand the struggles. They understand the hardships. They understand the days where you cry in the bathroom. They understand those. So definitely connect and reach out. We always give you their information in the description below this video or that you clicked on when you clicked on the replay. No matter what it is, guess what? We want you to be successful and to succeed in this year. That being said, I am your host, Alex Vies Pelzer, the voice coach, professional speaker, certified life coach, Amazon bestselling author and podcaster. And guess what, guys? If you are a speaker, an author, a coach, I would love to have you on as a guest. If you go to bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast, all lowercase, you can sign up for a date for you to be able to be a guest here on the show. And I can talk to you about your journey. With that being said, until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out.
kasih ya.